Yeah, hello everybody and welcome to a new part in the thylacine tutorial series. So this time I did something I haven't done before with this series, uh, which is um, I've kind of spared you an hour and a half of, uh, yeah, you know, um, putting the text tree together, so making it all consistent, mm, because I, I figured I don't really have to record that because the process is all the same as I did on the head. It's just some kind of tedious um, job that you, you know, have to go through, but it, it didn't really bring anything new or interesting. Mm, so now I am going to pick up where or where this process left me, um, which is basically now I have to fix those seams um, that were created during that, and then I also have to do some manual painting. Um, for mainly for the feet and paws, and uh, finally, um, after the seams are fixed, I have to overlay some um, grayscale fur texture to give it all some unity, and then maybe add some um, some manual shading to make it like um, to give it some muscle definition and highlights and shadows and all that kind of stuff. We'll see when we get there. So the first thing now um, is texture painting. So I use a blender to remove those seams because it is a lot easier than doing it manually in GIMP. So I go to the texture paint mode. Now you see uh, it switched to another texture because um, the material texture, um, the material still had another another texture assigned. So I, I select the right one, then it will keep that texture when it uh, sw when it switches to texture paint mode. Yes. Okay, so um, I'll enable the tools. So um, I switch to the clone brush over here. Um, no, I want it to accumulate uh, so it keeps on painting while I, I press the button um, and then options yeah I want more bleeding so this is the amount it extends over the border on the UV map if I if I turn off bleeding and I get these uh, artifacts here on the seam, which is kind of a... You, you see the pixels that have not been changed, especially when you zoom out. Okay, anything else? I don't think so, we'll see when we get there. So I, I place the cursor and then I can paint. Okay, now it's too strong. too strong. When I use accumulate I can set it quite low but then I have great control over everything. It's really useful. And now the, the important part is not to clone just from next to the part you're painting on but try to get stuff in from some other areas as well as to make it um well to kind of keep the texture pattern and you know break it up a little. Now I, I turn off the mirror modifier because um I could get nasty artifacts when I paint over the middle line. I want to avoid that. This looks kind of like it was cloned over one time. So I'll get rid of that. Okay. 
Now, actually, I haven't looked at any reference uh, for the back of the ear while I made this, so I'll, I'll have to check that again if I was or if my estimate was okay, so to speak. Now this is, as you can see, it's a really a great way of getting rid of seams because you don't have to worry where you're on the UV map, but you can just paint straight on it, and that's really great. Uh, now we're getting some bleeding issues here. So I have to um, lower the bleed value because it, it bleeds into the interesting parts of the UV map. So I should probably go back and uh, restore the eye a bit from an older version because it, it was darkened too much. Maybe we'll see. I can also use the smudge tool, I think. Soften, maybe also. A smear is better. More strength. Yep. So just so I can get rid of that edge easily here. Because it may still be a little darker than the rest, but as long as the edge is smooth, you won't really notice it as much. Okay, now back to the clone tool. Need a different pose. Yeah, a bit more relaxed here. something I have to fix here in the model. Um, I, I only gave it um, four toes, but in fact um, it has um, five or fingers actually. So I'll just fix it real quick. Um, so I'll take these, duplicate them, and add one. Yeah. So I go like, oops, what happened now, did I lose my edits, no I'll, I'll just go and save these before I forget. Okay, now they're, they're safe. So otherwise, I might lose my my um, texture edits that I already made. Now on to joining that together. Okay, so I have to unhide this. So Alt M at center. And uh, create a 
face here. Oop. these two faces and create a face well we can rid of that one as well I didn't remove them actually what's up there Oh, okay. For some reason it would not merge here. So, delete faces now. So we create this one and we create um, the toe on the side again. Yep. just have to adjust the UV map uh, and adjust the model a little bit as well like this so it doesn't look uh, all that sharp and edgy so now we have four fingers uh, five fingers oops and we just need to make sure that they unwrap properly so I'll take these, or this new bit, make sure it's unpinned, make sure we have the seams in the right places, make sure everything else is pinned, so also the teeth, and then unwrap and see what happens. Okay, so here we have one that got astray, it looks better. Now we'll unpin some more stuff here to make it a bit more even. That looks better too. And that looks fairly good now. Now just select all and then assign them to this texture again. So we we get texture in all of them on every single face. So now we have our four toes. And I think it could be a bit smaller. Thinner actually. Because it, it kind of looks huge. Clumpy. No, it's fine. Okay. So I'll just save that now. Which would be actually um, number 13. And oh wait, we're doing texture sets. So number thirteen, texture number three. Okay. Well, so now we can go back to texture paint mode finally. And now we have this reference here of the of the paw, mm, but it kind of doesn't really match properly. So we have to go and do some manual painting. Uh, so we need the draw brush and then we need the color picker. I'm, I'm really not sure what's the shortcut for the color picker. I couldn't seem to find it, so I'll just um, do the, the slow web version. Okay, but before before it makes sense to paint um, these pads, really we, we need um, we need to even out the seam so it becomes becomes one consistent uh, blob of color. So I grab this color here first and just paint over it. We don't need any texture because it's all crap anyway. So later on I'll have to um, go over it and uh, create a new texture more or less from scratch. Um, so in, in GIMP later on. Oh, 
Okay. So now we can paint those pads. Oops. No. And now add some variation, some highlighting in the middle. We go in there, lower the strength, kind of give it some highlights so kind of to fake and shading here. And we also make some dark patches, less strength, a bit more size. And you can see kind of where it's going. So it, it's getting these kind of the toes are sort of divided here, like um, for quite some time. Mm. Hey, that's actually I think that should this part here should extend further back. So it should be a bit bigger so I'll just paint over it because the texture the, so the source actually doesn't really have a good texture so I'll just um, yeah basically paint most of it from from scratch and the problem with it was it was actually it was quite quite crisp but um, what made it more or less un unusable unusable was um the fact that it was all dried up because it was um you know it dried out over uh during the process of taxidermy so it it didn't look uh, lifelike anymore to control here yes so I'll probably uh, might have to look at some references of you no know, kind of Tasmanian devil pause or something like that but I think we're Mm, well, slowly getting there. I think now that the outline's kind of reasonable. Before it was like way too small. And you see I'm, I'm always changing not just or I, I try to not just change um, the lightness of the color but also kind of change the hue so we get um, all sorts of different shades and not just one blob of the same color that one kind of looks ugly still yeah. So 
that's more or less evened out. Um, so the spacing of the toes and such. Yeah, I think that's okay. Now let's use that color here for for this uh, patch of skin. Okay, now I'll just go and, and see whether we can find some images. Just kind of so to get a better idea of how it should look. Okay, that looks interesting. And this here looks almost yeah, it looks really much like um, the one of the thylacine. This one here has almost these kinds of looks almost like dinosaur skin with these um, polygonal uh, skews. Really. Where's my reference? Yeah, there. Yeah, so I, I suppose it can be darker. And with only kind of light on. Yeah, I think that came from this one. like patches. Yep, that's where this color came from. So I suppose that came from tanning. So we'll make it darker. A bit. is not working okay it is and now color I think it's still too much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'll use um, the smear tool again. soften up this outline so it looks like there was real fur growing over it. Now we need a 
kind of like some shading in between those toes mm, so we'll take the draw brush again and maybe try to burn it I'm not sure if it looks good so we need more radius and then very little strength and I paint just short blobs um, so I don't uh, create these um, streak artifacts that you get when you go like you get kind of sharp edges and you don't want that in this case I'll just clone over that bit this one as well I think that's almost good to go now in terms of color and anything else we'll add later on in GIMP for hand Yep. So I'll just save that. And now it goes on with the uh, back leg. But it's basically the same procedure again. First, clone over all the seams. also remove these stretchy areas here okay and here the, the reference matched up a lot better than on the other one I can probably just use the smear tool again to hide the seam. Yeah. Okay, now that that is done, yeah, I think that looks lifelike enough on the on the hand. So I'll just um, take the color from here. So we have some kind of reference back here. Replace the color. So we don't have to go through the complete painting process. Also here on this patch of skin. Mm. Okay. Now back to mix mode. less strength, smaller brush. Now I'm going to try to get the outlines here. Yeah, now this is a bit ugly because we're going over the seam. Um, so switch back to clone clone over this to make sure our seam is nicely clean and 
and nothing um, leaks over. So um, so we avoid um, bleeding artifacts later on. So I'll try to confine this here just to um, this part on the UV map. Where is it? Here, so I don't get any of this black bit over here, just all the way on this side. Because when I would zoom out, I'd get um, problems because of um, because of the uh, resampling of the image. It it would blur, and we would cr um, get um, nasty artifacts. kind of try to add some shading now mm, because the, the source was fairly flat and lacked much of its natural uh, shading mm -hmm. I think this uh, should be a bit wider than it was because uh, it looked like it was uh, sued up on the reference. So I'll just make this a tiny bit wider. I think I, ha I had a reference for that actually. Ah, yeah, that's the hand. Okay. And. Also the hand. Um, Top part. Oh, that might be a nice source of tex texture. Actually, looks fairly good. And then here, the underside. Yeah, yeah, it was sewed up. So that's not something we can just um, use directly. Unfortunately. Yeah, here we can see it a bit. So it goes up all the way to the ankle joint. Look. Yeah, that's all I have to invent it. So now we're getting painty again. Must be wider, but it's really just a guess. I have no clue. Um, when I look at it from this angle, it, it looks pretty much like. On that one taxidermy. The strength.
Okay. Now here I think this should go more to the middle. So maybe I'll I'll do that in, in GIMP later on, so I'll just rotate it. Okay, now back to the smear tool. So as to break up this edge and make it look like there was hair growing over it once again. Because it really helps to remove or get rid of that painty look that we have when we, when we well when we just paint it. And it's and it's quite effective because it it looks a lot better already when I did after doing that. doesn't really want no Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that looks fairly convincing now. I have to even out these spots a little. So back to the draw tool. I'll take this color. Now it looks fairly even. Here as well. This one's a, a little bit uh, brighter, uh, darker than. Mm, than the, the hand, so um, yeah, I'll overlay. Now I'll do that in GIMP. So just that one last seam here on the tail, a little bit of clone tool, and then we can go back to GIMP and create the um, the final texture overlay and do any remaining adjustments. Yeah, well, no. Time to save that one. And open it up. Where is it? There. Merge number three. Yes. Okay. So, what we do we have to do now? So, first thing is. Bring this one 
a little bit um, just rotate it a tiny bit bring it I think a bit to the left actually I'm not sure I'll use um, feathering and create the new layer from that. I have to check. Yeah, it has to go to the left, so it has to be rotated counterclockwise. Maybe like that, maybe even more, we'll see. Do with some more, yes. Maybe that's enough. It's interesting a bit. Movement. Okay, now it needs more. So I go back and to the unrotated version. So I don't lose even more quality by rotating it several times on the one that was already rotated because each um, rotation step decreases quality. Okay, now that was too much. So somewhere in between. I think I already mentioned it, but um, the tools in GIMP here really suck in this case, the transformation. It's really not comfortable because you can only do one step at a time. You can't um, move and rotate really at the same time. Maybe I just don't know where the right tool is, but that kind of annoys me, to put it mildly. Okay. We can merge that down. Slightly reduce the contrast here from these. I think I'll sharpen this one here a bit because it was hand painted, or most of it was. So I can't really live up to um, the the original. I'll just sharpen it with maybe 40 and kind of blur it again to even it all out. What's this? Okay. Yes, well, now that one's a tiny bit um lighter than the back so i'll take it and make it a bit darker ah oh lost it that's annoying because sometimes it rotates your selection when you click and move your mouth um, move your mouse while you do that <laughs> and then it's then it's kind of lost so that's not exactly nice now mm, brightness maybe increase the contrast a little too yep okay so now i create a new layer 
this bit completely transparent. I take the draw brush and then I use one of these um, brushes uh, that I've created which are basically just a grayscale texture, uh, a fur texture um, that converted to grayscale and then made sure is it is um, exactly on average um, like um, exactly complete gray so it's exactly half way between white and black so um, I think it's uh, 128 or something for R, G and B um, so when we overlay this onto our image and so when we change the overlay and we don't change the general um, lightness of or contrast of the background but we only change um, these local uh, details because of um, of the texture so now um, we can do it fairly quickly because there's a trick here when when we use this as a brush I'm um, opposed to copy pasting every single bit of the texture to um, you know get the texture flow correctly we do um, yeah we cheat so we go to this dynamics tab here and uh, select a track direction and now when we paint um, the brush rotates according to the movement um, of our of the mouth so this is a bit crude when we when we have it um, we use a big one of course now the texture is too small but you see it adapts to the flow we need now I'm not sure which one was better because I made two um, I think I like the smaller one better and now I just try to recreate flow that the texture already has now when I overlay this it might look good and might not I'm not really sure so it's it's kind of a trial and error thing I think we're getting to nice results with this technique so some parts are already fairly sharp and don't really need much of an overlay but others are not that crisp so they can really use one especially of course the stuff that we painted from scratch Now this is obviously not the exactly best way to do it but it's um, certainly time saving and as long as your base texture is um, as long as the sample that you use is not too repetitive you can usually get away with that in some cases you don't but when, you're, when your texture overlay and your image work 
together well, you can create a fairly good illusion. Um, now I have to make it a bit bigger here. Maybe not that big. Okay, well, so let's overlay that and quickly remove the places where we certainly don't want to have any of that um, leaking in. So mouth, um, you blur the eye. Oh yeah, I want you to go back and fix the eye. Um, this one, yeah, it came from here. Now just copy, paste to new layer, bring it down here. I can't move it down again. I have no clue why. That's really annoying. Something seems to be broken with my GIMP. And it's not fun. Well, I can deal with it at the moment, but I should eventually get rid of that. these because the eye has much more resolution than the rest. Okay now ready for a test so we export we export it as um, a new image just to make sure we could eventually go back in in case um, that we might have screwed it up big um, and just kind of a security because better be precautious than or better be safe than sorry you know because it's virtually impossible to get rid of the texture after you've um, saved it into one image now I can show that one again and you can see it, it looks already pretty cool I think the texture is convincing enough because it it really goes well with uh, what was already there so there's not much of um of an issue we have to fix which is good now critical part here this this bit of the lag kind of lag texture before so maybe we can just create another a second overlay layer put it to overlay and now use a slightly bigger brush here and see how that looks maybe we, we don't even have to overlay something from the original image that I, I looked at earlier because I think that looks quite plausible now because um, the larger texture gave it some more depth 
So that was lacking before and now it's there. Yep. Oh yeah, here we, we didn't really edit the upper side here, so I'll just do that. Um and GIMP. Back to the normal brush. that looks I suppose we can just adjust the UV map a little to make it match better less work than going back and repainting it all and works just as well now here we can smooth this bit a little no smooth come on there Yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, actually. It's perhaps not completely perfect, but it's at least something you can look at. And it, it doesn't really look too much like a stuffed animal or like a doll or something like that. It kind of, it looks plausible. It looks like it could be something living. I think this part here should be a little darker. So fix that. And then there's just one thing that's still bugging me. Once that is fine. And that is, um, yeah, here you see the mouth is still uh, fairly blank and lacks any good texture. Oops. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so what do we do with the mouth? I think we'll have to draw. Probably. Mm. I don't want any fur texture on the lip. Need that to be crisp. Oh, uh, not crisp. It has to be soft and smooth. Okay. I think we can get away with uh, keeping that hat extra there on the on the paws because it it just sort of blends into noise and and we don't it's not disturbing so that's fine. So now I'll try what just some sharpening gives us, but I'm fairly sure it won't help. To 
tools, filters, enhance, sharpen. Yeah, so the problem is we have these um, these uh, stretch artifacts, so we can smudge it a little, smear it. Now we need something to fill the void. Yeah, well. I didn't save any of those Tasmanian devil trolls, really. Oh, I think I, I had a, a tongue texture. I'm not quite sure, but I think I had one in one of my texture folders. Maybe it's here. Yeah, some generic tongue thing there. That might be useful. I think mouth, uh, mouths are already uh, are always fairly hard to to get convincing. So I'll just try that tongue now. No, it doesn't work. They always roll that that tongue backwards. Uh, that's just annoying. I think I'll just use some kind of leather texture. These are all from uh, textures.com stuff I've used in previous projects. It's basically often always the same set of textures that I have kind of uh, proven to work. Like you don't need much more than like maybe 20 or something like that that you can always use for different overlays. So grayscale it. Yeah, that, that also that already makes it a lot more plausible. Um, layer, layer to image. Now I, I'm just clone over it, so these the gum also get some on this one. Now. We've got to be careful uh, with the transparency, but because that might fuck up the transparency. Um, yeah. Now get rid of that external stuff. Now overlay. Now go and open your draw man. Um, I'll 
turn off keyframing. Ah, so that's the tongue here. I can sharpen that a bit more and maybe refine it. Now just um, see how it looks when sharpened and like really strong. Well, this one bit is not really convincing because it's too bright or too light. So we'll make this all really dark here. Yeah, I think it's getting con coming convincing. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. I'm still not particularly happy about these stripes. So I'll have to go and really take the smudge tool and break them open. I'll take small brush. Oh, I think they actually come from the texture, maybe. Some of them do. Yes, yeah, so I'll go with these with a clone brush to get rid of them. Okay, this la uh, this dark spot I also don't like. Oops. Mm -hmm. Teeth are hiding. There's actually also something wrong here. So we get um, the teeth are, are stuck here.
so we don't want anything to to go over the UV border. But that's an easy fix. this one here too. So that's just a weight painting issue. Need the tools. Oh. My middle mouse wheel is broken and it's really annoying because I don't have complete control over um, over the navigation in Blender anymore. As you can imagine, that's not really great when you have to when you have to rotate it. Okay. Now it moves along. So I think I'm happy with the texture for the moment. So it might need some more detail or some more fixes, but I think it's it's best if I let it rest a bit and then go back to it after a while. But for the moment, I quite like it. Maybe, of course, um, the whiskers are are missing still, but that's just some small detail and. Another thing, so this pouch could also be um, modeled out. In this case, it's actually the a male, um, which has some kind of pseudo pouch. Um, so we also need some kind of sexual dimorphism later on. Well, we'll see when we get to that. But as we as we have some more UV space left here. It shouldn't be too hard to implement that. Okay, now as the skin is almost done, I can just do one last uh, thing and kind of finalize it. So I make a copy of that model and also make a copy of the material and make a copy of the texture then assign a, another image to that texture. Yeah, so we, we take number four. And now I'm going to bake it onto the another onto the other texture so I get rid of these artifacts that we have these leftovers. So we we get clean um, clean UV extensions. So when I go to box, turn on fill. Oh yeah, it's already all set up. So I can just go, and in theory I can just simply. Yeah, I have to set it up here first. So I only want to bake the textures. I want to bake from selected to active. I want the image to be cleaned. I want a margin of 64 pixels. I want. Um, quartz to split fixed and I think now I can bake it. So now I select the source which is the one with no image number 4 and then I shift select the target and then I go bake and yeah it fucked up as was to be expected Well, sometimes that stuff just happens. Okay, I know why. This one's supposed to be the source. This one's the target. But I also have to assign the other image 
here in the UV editor. So now it should work. Yes, yes. Okay, so now you can see that looks a lot cleaner than before. But we get a few artifacts, so we can play with this bias value. Big again. That's much better. Maybe even more bias against um, the other mesh. Too much bias. So now it can't find some of these. So, so now we've got six zeros. So I'll try one more if it hates that. Okay, that was too much. So six is the, the way to go. So this is merge number four baked. Now when I, I can close that for a while. Oh yeah, baking always or often I confuse this blender to the point where it uh, crashes. So now when we look at this bake here it should be nearly identical or it should be the content of the image should be identical and you can see when I toggle the layers that it really is identical so you can't see any any difference other than these um, these a few artifacts and of course the um, the new edges now what I'm going to do is simply because we have just this one artifact here at this intersection I think I can just go get away with cloning it And the rest then should be fine. So now we have a, a fairly good looking skin, which is perhaps not completely done, but at, at least it's something we can use. Um, so yeah, that would be it for this time. Um, so the next one, next tutorial might be um, more about skin refining. So the, the last finishing touches, maybe some shading, maybe um, the the whiskers, or maybe um, adding these extra sexual dimorphism kind of details that, that are still missing. But that's basically where it's at. Or I might go on uh, with animating once again. I'm not sure. So that's kind of open for now. So see you next time. Mm.